bros. It's good to see you. What's up? Hi boss, it's time to start thinking about the economic modeling for Ultra Gemma Star. We will be submitting evidence to the HTA agencies soon. Great, so what are the options? Well, the main benefit of Ultra Gemma Star is that we think it makes people live longer. So the survival estimates that we use in the economic model are going to be really important. The trial only has 24 months of follow-up and quite a large proportion of people were still alive at our last data cut. So, to estimate the long-term survival benefit we need to extrapolate beyond the trial. Oh yeah, I've heard about extrapolation before. We could use a Weibull model, right? Well, yes we could. But a Weibull model isn't always the most appropriate model to use. Model choice depends on a lot of things, like what shape we expect the hazard function to be over time. Rose, what are you talking about? The hazard function. The risk of death over time. A Weibull model says that the risk must either increase or decrease. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, sometimes there might be turning points in the hazard function. Look at this graph I drew on your blackboard. Usually when people enter into clinical trials their risk of death in the short term is quite low, because trial eligibility criteria are strict. But if people in the trial have a serious disease, the hazard might go up at first. Then, over time, as the people with worse prognosis die, people with better prognosis are left. So the hazard of death in the remaining people in the trial is lower, and there could be this turning point in the hazard function. Those people remaining might have a low risk of death for a long time, especially if they've been cured of their disease. But then in the really long term their risk of death might go up again because they're getting older. Okay. So you're saying that it might be realistic to have a hazard function that has turning points in it? Yes, that's right. And a Weibull model can't represent that kind of hazard function. The same is true for exponential models and Gumpert's models. Unless you fit these in a relative survival framework, incorporating external information on mortality. Log normal and log logistic models can represent hazards that increase and then decrease, but they can only have one turning point. Rose, you're confusing me. What are you saying? Well, if we think the hazard function might have turning points in it, none of the standard parametric models that have been used in HTA for years are appropriate. So, what should we do? Well, more recently people have used flexible parametric models, mixture models and mixture cure models. They can deal with turning points and hazard functions. We could look at the Ultra Gemma star trial results, think about what we expect to happen to the hazards over time and take it from there. Excellent. I especially like the idea of a cure model. Report back to me. Hi Rose. How is your survival analysis going? Hi boss. We could start by looking at the Kaplan-Meier curve from the trial. Wow. That's an awesome Kaplan-Meier curve. Look at that plateau. It's totally flat. Well. Yes. But the numbers at risk at that point in the graph are really low. That plateau could be completely false. Well, what that graph is showing me is that after 19 months no one who took Ultra Gemma Star dies. But you told me that the hazard function was really important. What does it look like? Here it is. I've smoothed it so that you can see the trend. It goes up a bit at first. There's a bit of a wobble. But it looks like there could be a turning point. Oh cool. Just like that picture you showed me before. So what model do you think we should use? Well, the hazard function suggests that models that can't deal with a turning point probably aren't appropriate. So exponential Weibull and Gumpert's models probably wouldn't be the best choice. 
log logistic, log normal, generalized gamma or other flexible parametric models could potentially fit the trial data well. But we should think about what we expect to see beyond the trial period too. There could be another turning point in the hazard function. So we need to think about how we could build that into our model. Okay. But look. Those hazards look like they're falling. The Kaplan-Meier curve has got a plateau at the end. Why don't we use one of those cure models you were talking about? Well, we could try. There is reason to believe that some people are cured in this disease area. Registry data suggests that once people reach five years, they don't die of the disease. The problem is, it's going to be really hard to model the cure fraction. There's not enough data. I think we need to look at a range of scenarios. Well look Rose, we have a plateau in the Kaplan-Meier curve, and we think some people are cured. So we've got to look at a cure model. Okay. I'll try fitting the model. I'll let you know what I find. Hi boss. Hi Rose. How's it going with that cure model? I fitted the model. It gave a cure fraction of 39%. Wow. That's awesome. Curing 39% of our patients is amazing. We never thought the drug could do that. But if it's what the model says... The model could be wrong. What? Come on Rose. This is a sophisticated, cutting-edge analysis of our trial data. We have good reason to believe that some people will be cured, and we've used this complex model to estimate the cure fraction. Who can argue with that? Anyway, show me the survival curve. Here it is. Oh. My. God. Look at that survival curve. Rose. You have made my day. But boss, think about it. In the Ultra Gemma Star trial the complete response rate was 20%, which is similar to what we saw in earlier phase studies. In those studies quite a lot of people who got a complete response were alive at 5 years, but not all of them. So 39% is not realistic. Even 20% is probably too high. Also, the model is really sensitive to the distribution we use for the uncured patients. Different distributions give us different cure fractions. And we need to think about what cure actually means here. At the moment we've used age-matched background mortality rates for the cured patients. But these people had a serious disease, and have comorbidities. Their risk of death could be higher than the background population even if they aren't going to die of their disease. We should run more scenarios, so we can show how sensitive our results are to different assumptions around the cure model. Rose. No. We've done enough here. You said yourself that companies and HTA agencies have been using standard parametric survival models for years, and that they often might not be appropriate. We've gone beyond that. We're using a more advanced model. Let's just submit what we've done. Hi, everyone. Amanda asked me to report back to you all on the preliminary decision NICE has made on Ultra Gem Star. I'm afraid it's bad news. NICE realized that our cost-effectiveness results were completely reliant on our survival analysis and they didn't agree with our cure model. They said that fitting a cure model to our short-term trial data was really prone to error, especially because the numbers at risk at the end of trial follow-up were very low. They looked at our earlier phase studies and decided it was not realistic to assume that more people were cured than actually responded to treatment. They said that there might be reason to expect a small proportion to be cured but they thought our analysis was way too optimistic. 
their preliminary decision is not to recommend Alt Regema Star for use in the NHS, because they don't think our model allows them to come up with a credible estimate of cost effectiveness. I know. I can't believe it. Rose. Thank you. Can I ask, are you surprised by this? Well, not really. No. Oh? So why did we submit this shoddy analysis to NICE? Well, I don't think we should have. You knew the analysis wasn't up to scratch. I did. All the things NICE pointed out are things that I had thought of. We should have done the analysis properly in the first place. If we are not honest with the HTA agencies and payers we'll lose their trust. Everything gets delayed including patient access to good drugs. If we carry on like this, patients might never get access to Ultra Star. But I think if we do a good job on the analysis this time we still have a chance. Rose, I completely agree. But I still don't understand. Why didn't we submit a reasonable model the first time round? Um. Jack? Well, um, I, well, I told Rose to submit the model as it was. I told her not to do the other stuff. I just wanted Nice to say yes to Ultra Gemstar. A cure fraction of 39% sounded so awesome. I didn't realize Nice would be so picky. Jack, Nice aren't being picky. They're trying to make sure that limited NHS resources get used sensibly. We have a duty to patients and to wider society to help them with that job. Jack. You're fired. Rose. How do you feel about a promotion? Hi boss.